Even in a normal year, the holidays can really bring a mix of emotions. And this year, we're certainly feeling the intensity of separation and social isolation. And for some, that means drinking more and even using drugs. Maurice Lee, the COO from Navos, a nonprofit providing mental health services in South King County, is here to dispel some myths about addiction and treatment. Good morning, Maurice. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Michelle. It's a pleasure. Well, first of all, let's start with what's the what's the difference between someone who's had too much and someone with an actual problem? Well, Michelle, there's recreational use and then there is abuse and even further along there's addiction. Uh, we need to recognize that some of us are genetically predispositioned to addiction uh, based upon our family histories. Uh, when we start to see that recreational use uh, has more frequency, that people start having a greater tolerance, that there are problems that start to emerge in people's lives, such as involvement with the criminal justice system, uh, people not being able to get up for work in the morning, and people shirking their responsibilities, uh, we need to start to look at seeking help. Uh, typically, uh, people will use and use rec recreational during the holidays, but when it starts to create some problems in people's lives, then people need to start looking at uh, options to try to uh, seek out some type of, uh, of assistance. Okay, well in doing so, you know, I've heard that you've got to really kind of wait for a person to hit bottom, and that's hard. Uh, are there ways to coax someone into, into treatment? Michelle, I believe that that is one of the biggest myths that we have. Uh, waiting for someone to hit rock bottom would equate to waiting for someone with a physical condition to wait for the body to deteriorate to the point of unrepair. Uh, we need to intervene as early as we possibly can uh, to try to seek help. Uh, some of the, the, the damage that is caused through addiction are the things that are needed most uh, for successful recovery. We don't need to wait until we're estranged from our families, until we're lost our employment and lost our homes. I think that that is one of the biggest mistakes that we've made in the past uh, is believing that people had to have this rock bottom before treatment could be successful. The earlier we intervene uh, and can coax somebody into care, uh, the better the outcomes. Oh, that's that's great. Thank you so much for dispelling that myth. Um, are there any new treatments, perhaps, for substance use problems? In novels, we uh, take a whole person care approach. So we don't just look at, you know, one aspect. We look at the mind, body, and the spirit. Uh, we've integrated primary health care, which is also critical to make sure that someone uh, is not only dealing with their addiction, but also uh, getting their physical health and their mental health and their spiritual health in order. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we've kind of taken an approach in the past that medications were not acceptable for someone to be totally abstinent during recovery. Uh, we know today that, you know, people have mental health issues that will have a very difficult, if even impossible time ever recovering if we can't stabilize their mental health conditions. Uh, so now there are medications uh, to help and assist with uh, recovery, such as Suboxone. So in the past, that was a dysnoma that we believed that you couldn't even take pretty much even an aspirin mm -hmm. in recovery. But now we know better. We use the science, uh, but we also make sure that the therapies are included because medication alone is not a single answer and there's no magic pill that's going to help someone recover. Well, nonetheless, it is so great to hear that we have come so far and we know better. And Maurice Lee, thank you so much for that great perspective and also dispelling myths for us. Thank you, Michelle. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too.